and be judged by God. We are, we are under threat and uh, it's important that the, as a country we recognize that the only way to overcome this public health threat is to address it in a holistic way, to address it in a way that mobilizes the population, firstly to understand the nature of the threat that we face, and secondly to recognize that we are all vulnerable and it requires a response that involves all of us. And uh, you know, we speak about the separation of church and state and so on. Those are discussions that are had and with some justification in particular context. But when it comes to securing the well-being, the welfare of a people, um, it, you know, it, it, it is a solution that, that is going to require a coming together of all concerned. One of the reasons why we support the Ministry of Health in their campaign to have persons vaccinated is because we believe that as leaders we have to take a very responsible position. I took the jabs because I've always believed what John Maxwell has said. Everything rises or falls on leadership and I am of the firm conviction that leaders should lead from the front. I want to say that I have been bombarded every day by persons who say to me, my pastor told me, if I take the vaccine, it means that I'm putting my faith and trust and confidence in the vaccine. That's very sad. Because, you know, the Word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, prior to COVID-19, have always encouraged the members of the church to live healthy to practice the basic laws of health, but recognize that disease is rampant in our, in our community and around the world. And hence, when one is infected or affected, one ought to seek medical help. help. Our members have in the past participated in vaccination group. I have been vaccinated. I have taken the vaccine as a child. And on a numerous occasion when I have to travel on business for the church, I've had to take vaccine in order to enter different countries, in order to, to be healthy. As an Anglican, and as one of the worldwide leaders of the Anglican Communion, we decided, the Archbishops of the world, chaired by the Archbishop of Canterbury, we decided we want to find out the facts beyond what government has to say had to say about the media was carrying. So we met with representatives of the World Health Organization. And they shared with us in that meeting statistics of the information about the, the virus. But one of the things they pointed out is that the scientific community which they represent, they can carry out all of the research and they can develop the vaccines, but it takes a community to stop a pandemic. So it is not just about the science, it is about the community, it is about all of us. And one of the things we committed to do was to be part of the movement to build resilience and to commit to being credible voices in the midst of all of the half-truths and the conspiracies that have been spread around. And that is part of the commitment of the Anglican Communion across the world. It is also what I affirm and what I've been preaching for the diocese, but also for the country. It is reasonable and responsible for us to trust that medical science 
is guided by divine wisdom in developing vaccines for the protection of human life. Christians, therefore, must lead the way, following our Savior, the saints, and all our forebears of the faith. For we are called not to live just for ourselves, but for others, guiding our personal decisions by the law of love. It is estimated that 67% of our population here in Jamaica are Catholic, are Christians, rather. If Christians are vaccinated, we can establish the herd immunity that is desired for normality to be restored for socio-economic, educational, and religious activities. We really Greetings, people. Here, you can clearly see there is no separation between church and state. There is absolutely no separation because of ancient time, the church was the keeper of all the property of the people. They were the bank. And then they pass it on to the state in order to hide the fact that they are the true culprit. Hence, you have the crown, which is a Templar church. People do the research. Here you're seeing it clearly where the church and the state one every different denomination of the religious system is being represented here and this is the goal of the state to have the church I reckon instruct its members to conform to the edicts of the state. This is where the church pacify people. This is why people is so passive. So here is another hypocrisy, for lack of a better word. Free will is just that. If you choose to be vaccinated, what is your free will? If you choose not to be vaccinated, that is also your free will. It's no different if you choose to be enslaved that is your free will. And if you choose to be free, that is also your free will. It's a choice that was endowed by the creator of nature, a great spirit. Wow. Why are cultural leaders doesn't express themselves this way. Why do our cultural leaders have to impose their political views, their religious views, and their spiritual views on the masses? And if you don't agree with these people, these so-called cultural leaders, then you're mentally ill. You're insane. You're a madman. Show and prove what is your allegiance. What 
kind of passport do you guys carry around? What kind of identification do you guys carry around when you're out here misleading our common folks? You can Africans, you colonists, you pirates, you are the Caribbean pirates, you are the pirates of the Caribbean. Truth unfolds itself naturally. The truth represents light in these dark times. This truth can only be heard from this platform, can only be echoed from this platform. Shamar, call out. Sharallah, Hawa, Allah, Hayanawa, Hawa, Akad. Mosai, our creator is one. Shamar, Hawuak, Hawa. Allah Hayinahu, Awa Akad. Hear, O Awa. The Lord our God is one. That is not Arabic. That is not Aramic. That is more Shamatic. Because in our alphabetical line up, we say, Ah, Wa, Ga. Da, ma, la, na, la, we saw me, we must say A, B, C, D. There is a difference. Sound, vibration, with frequency, emit power. So here we are, people demonstrating that there is no separation between the church and the state because the church was the property holder passing it on to the state and in order to avoid scrutiny however that church is that crown that church is that crown Really are dealing with an existential threat, that is coronavirus. The virus has actually tested our characters. Um, and we found, <laughs> strangely, that the it's strange in a discussion like this. Everyone is of one accord, one voice. need to research the word conspiracy so the legal definition of that word conspiracy confederation confederacy these are words that we need to ascertain the legal definition of these words because a, a, a discussion like this i would at least expect to see one or two descending view, one or two get us a participant raising an objection or bringing an alternative view to the discussion. But here you see it's one voice, one accord, church and state. Is one. The first impulse that came from some groups was a self-centered, inward-looking kind of approach. And I think we've had a chance to reflect. And this has happened at the international level, at the national level, and even as we see in, in individual respects.
But we've had a chance to reflect I believe. And my view is that the trend towards the trend and the attitude towards the virus is changing. But it is not fast enough. We must move further and more quickly towards the position that answers the question which asks, what is the most reliable way of returning to a productive and hopeful social system? We believe the answer to that question is a population that has sufficiently protected itself against a virulent, powerful, and lethal virus. I believe that there is no inherent contradiction and conflict between science and religion. In fact, as this relates to the whole matter of healing, the God we worship is a God who seeks and promotes and provides for the healing of his people. This is part of the whole story of the life of Jesus, the miracles of healing. But it is also the reason why the Seventh-day Adventists have a hospital here in Jamaica. It is part of the reasons why the Anglicans have a hospital. It is part of the reasons why the Seventh-day the, the Roman Catholics were invested in a hospital. Because religion speaks to the matter of healing and the use of science and the research and benefit of science for the healing of persons. Here you are with people. The church and the state are one. Gratitude for your time. Gratitude for your patience. 